Welcome to the Heart Centered Sales Leader Podcast on webtalkradio.net. I am your Heart Centered Sales Leader and host, Connie Whitman. Thanks for joining us this week. Now, I hope as you listen to the show every week between my guests and I, we provide some tips, strategies, and ideas that, yes, you can implement immediately. Um, that immediacy, that execution, that action, that's where the change happens. And you can build your business, increase client connections, build those amazing, long lasting relationships. The other piece of the show is that sales is not an icky sleazy thing, but it's really, I hope that my guests and I show that sales success really comes from being heart centered, which is that idea of selling from a place of love, care, and respect. Yes, yes, I know I am a broken record. I need to repeat it so that it becomes so. (laughs) That's Connie's world. (laughs) Also, if you are enjoying the show, please, please subscribe, rate, and review. I love reading the reviews. They really do warm my heart and makes me excited when people listening feel that they're learning and gaining insight. Last quick housekeeping tip is on your sales journey. I really want you to be able to communicate at the highest level. So I have my free communication style assessment for you. You get your superpowers, your natural sales superpowers, and you also get maybe your little blind spots. And both reports are equally important because we need to know how we can show up bigger and better, but we also need to know how to stop shooting ourselves in the foot with those blind spots. So go to Whitman Assos. So it's W-H-I-T-M-A-N-A-S-S-O-C.com slash CSA. Again, that's my gift to you on your journey of creating more self-success in your life and building those wonderful, engaging client relationships. So today, my quote is by Allison Felix, and Allison says, everyone sees the glory of moments, but they don't see what happens behind the scenes. So today's topic is sales. Yay! My favorite topic. Um, My sales superpower is obviously speaking to clients. I'm really good at talking. Um, And the other piece for me is understanding my client's sales needs and be able to educate them to provide the solutions that are a perfect fit for them. Did you know that there is the shadow side to sales or the other side to sales, which is all the administrative stuff, right? We have to have um, that piece of the puzzle too. And I know that sounds crazy. Those people that know me, they go, Connie does administration work. I try to outsource as much as I can. (laughs) So the other side of sales, that behind the scenes, we're going to pull back the curtain today um, and see what actually needs to go on behind the scenes so that that success comes easier and that we can scale really at that exponential level. So today, of course, my guest is an expert in this realm and his name is Tim, um, sorry, Tom, sorry, Tom, uh, Tom Principe. Tom is a founder and CEO of Sales Success, and that's S-A-L-E-S and then S-X-E-S-S. I love it. It's sexy. Uh, A firm (laughs) specializing in sales strategy, sales process, and the sales execution. Tom has over 30 years of history of sales leadership and success in many, many different industries. Now, he has built and led sales teams in both the U.S. as well as abroad with annual revenues responsibility ranging from a million to excess of 500 million. His background includes experience with large international companies as well as small privately owned entrepreneurial companies. So he, he does the gamut. Please help me welcome my good friend and guest, Tom, to the show. So, Tom, thanks for being on. Connie, thanks again. Thanks for hosting me again. I'm excited because I think we have some uh, a good topic today, and we're going to share some good information. Yes, um, definitely. And I do giggle because I you're like the shadow side of sales, right? You're the behind-the-scenes <laughs> dude that makes sure the, the customer is really serviced to the highest level, right? But we could sell it, and, but the, the fulfillable is actually the bigger piece, and that streamlining to make sure that we cross every T is kind of important. So today, Tom and I, we're, we're really going to talk about 21, 2021 and the state of sales for those small to mid-sized businesses. And we're talking about sales agility and you have an assessment, right? That you have done yeah. in a ton of research. So this is based on that agility assessment, um, which I think you have over 2000 respondents. So this is real technical stats and Intel that you're getting live off the press today. So first question is first, tell us how the data was obtained again, that assessment and all of that, but what's the premise of it? 
Sure. So um, it's called the Sales Agility Assessment 4.0. It's basically 48 questions that address mm. the four key sales drivers pretty much in any organization. Mm. And this is a, a tool um, that I typically will use clients prior to onboarding them because it will give me a baseline in terms of how they're doing across the four uh, key areas. But in this case, the data, like you said, was compiled from um, CEOs, uh, business owners, and sales leaders, and um, I, I over 2,300 uh, respondents in there. Nice. So statistically, you you, uh, you have a lot of intelligent information that you're deriving this conversation from. So you mentioned four drivers. Yeah. Talk to me about what they are, just so everybody listening can start to you know frame out the the conversation we're going to have. Sure, exactly. So kind of the four sales drivers are really sales strategy. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what that means, actually. Sales methodology, sales analysis, and then sales organizations. Can you give us what each sure. of those kind of mean and what hap what's happening in those areas, again, specific to the, the smaller business owner? Sure, exactly. So I'm going to give a high-level overview, like you just asked, in terms of those four key areas. Okay. So. According to the data that we have, about 90% of these small to mid-sized businesses struggle with sales strategy. Mm. So that includes industry positioning, competition, value proposition, et cetera. About 92% struggle with sales methodology. So that includes territories, coverage, process, CRMs, implementation, et cetera. About 90% struggle with sales organization, and you'll love this category, <laughs> Connie, because it includes staffing, hiring, learning, development, roles and responsibilities. And then 94% are struggling with sales analysis, and that includes things like setting goals, quotas, KPIs, yeah. reporting, and then compensation and incentives. So that's kind of the high level view in terms of some of the challenges that are ongoing in those four critical areas. Yeah, and I see that a lot with my corporate clients. I mean, everybody struggles with it, but on the corporate side, because you have so many moving parts to begin with, that mm -hmm. definitely, if they're not focusing on those four drivers, you know, things definitely fall through the crack. What's happening in, in those areas? You just gave us the stats, but yep. What, yep. what are you finding with your clients? Can you give us some sure, sure. like examples? Maybe that's, that's yeah, a good that's, way that's to approach great, this. That's a great question. So let's, yeah, let's dive a little bit deeper into each of those categories again with some of the assessment um, results. Yeah. So in sales strategy, um, some of the challenges there, 98% of these businesses um, don't do a competitive analysis. So they really don't know who are my major competitors, how do we stack up against them, et cetera. 84% um, said they really don't clearly communicate their value proposition <laughs> to their customers. 82% um, said that they really haven't communicated, uh, again, a unique value proposition to their internal employees. So there's wow. a huge lack of alignment in those areas. Wow. And, and the reason why that's important, Connie, and we'll look at each of these areas, but you know, purpose and value-driven organizations outperform the market by 15 to one, <laughs> and they outperform competitors by about six to one. Sure. So that really, that strategy, that understanding you know, your, your competitors, developing a really unique and sound value proposition. And the value proposition is not necessarily what you do or how you do it, Absolutely. it's why you do it. Absolutely. And those things are really critical in terms of establishing a strategy. So why why this, okay, so I can answer that for mine, my sales strategy and what makes yep. me unique and what my mission is, right? It's, it's the why yep. for me of why are you in business, right? And why yep. do you yep. care about delivering this great, um, service, right? And teaching, you know, people how to sell more effectively so that they can make more money. But oh, by the way, so they can help their clients at this higher yeah. level, right? So I could clearly answer that. But my question is, why don't, if 84% aren't, aren't doing it externally, let alone communicated to their internal employees, which includes their salespeople, how can we articulate clearly what we're all about? Why aren't they yeah. doing well, that? That seems well, so odd to me. Well, that's the conundrum. And and to be fair, again, we're talking small, mid-sized businesses. Yeah. Okay, these aren't large corporations who typically have all that structure in place, right? And again, I would not fault any small business owner because mm. I know they're struggling and they're working hard. But that's, that's the challenge. <laughs> they are they are trying to run the business and they're not 
a sales expert. They're, yeah. they're not a marketing expert, okay? Yeah. And so that's where I think they struggle in terms of coming up with some sound strategies around sales because that's that's not their forte. Absolutely. And it, and, it, and it shouldn't be. They need to be running the business. They need to be kind of higher level, right? They need to, have to be the visionary. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I'm a small business, right? I network with small businesses. You and I, that's how we met through, through networking and introductions. And I feel... <laughs> business owners angst when it comes to sales because they're all oh, the sales they don't even know how to have a sales conversation let alone look at the strategy methodology the analytics behind it right and and setting up that organizational structure it, my, and I'll, I'll be honest with you as a small business owner my biggest angst for me is the whole marketing thing and right tom you and i know this because we're we're sales right we're in that yep. that that divisional piece of business um yeah, we're, sales on, are, we're on the good side right we're on the uh uh yeah of course right <laughs> But sales and marketing, people clump them together. And I, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm, sometimes I'm out there screaming, the sky is falling. Sales and marketing are two very different things. And listen, I have to hire marketing people. I have to hire branding people. I don't know how to clearly articulate my message in my branding and on my website, in my copy, in my emails. That's not my realm. I'm yeah. really good in front of the client. I'm really good at teaching people how to sell better in front of their clients. So yeah. these are blind spots, guys. Remember my communication style assessment? We all have these great superpowers, but we have these blind spots. And Tom, this is what you're talking about. If I'm really good at marketing, I might not be good at the sales. I don't even know what to look at. I'm I'm a sales vendor, right, in a small business. When it comes, when people say marketing to me, okay, what do I need to do? A website, branding, logo, yep. your messaging, what does your landing page look like? What is your swipe copy? In the beginning, when I started, I was like, what? I don't know. This is gibberish. Somebody said hashtag to me. I mean, this is, this is okay, guys, this is a long time ago. Remember, I've been in business 20 years. But Tom, someone said, oh, you have to hashtag. I'm like, what is a hashtag? And then when they said it's the pounds button, I go, why can't you just say it's the pound sign, right? Yeah. So there's so much terminology on marketing and then on the analytics and on the technology that goes behind CRM systems. There's a lot of moving parts. So everybody listening tom and i feel we're small business owners as well yep. we feel yep. your angst with yes. the things that we're not experts in so i love that so if anybody is struggling with that clear even verbal articulation of why are you in business what differentiates you from your competitors just really 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 briefly think for a moment the importance of that for your sales team for mm -hmm. yourself as you talk to people that that has to come out with tremendous clarity literally in the first 30 seconds. So exactly. we need to put that hat on or get help with that sales strategy. Dig in Can with I me a little bit. You know, you're, you're spot on in terms of how you articulated the, the challenge, right? Because sales and marketing, like you said, they're for two different functions. Yes. However, they're complementary and they are they are integrated in many ways. So yes. typically, <laughs> you know, you can't necessarily do one successfully without the other. That's but, right. but there again, that's where the small business owner, you know, they they need to raise their hand and ask for help in those cases. Absolutely. And and the thing is, what I like about Tom, everybody, is we're colleagues because I like that he handles all four of these. So he's an expert in. And Tom always says to me, I've trained before, Con, not my zone of genius. I'm really <laughs> good at zooming way out, looking at these four yep. pillars, get every everything organized, getting the right people doing those right activities. We can move the needle faster. And the irony too, Tom, every conversation you and I have, right and including me in this guys right i'm i'm at fault with this as well we spend a lot of money and time on the wrong things because we don't know any better and tom kind of is an expert on all of these pillars and he has teams that he's built around each of them to help with the implementation so again right. you're not alone but we don't know what we don't know and that's why i love having you on tom because these are big blind spots for me as well and I'm a sales expert, right? But I'm right. not the behind the scenes sales experts. I've always been out in the field, never working on the uh, programming for if right. if we have somebody for um, commissions, right? I, yep. I received my commission. I don't know what the back end looked like. Didn't care because it didn't affect me. <laughs> as long as you so, got paid. As <laughs> long as I got paid, baby, to pay the, you know, baby needs new shoes.
shoes, right? We exactly. have to put exactly. shoes on the kids. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the other three areas because sales methodology is also that's the one I want to dig that, in. That again yeah. goes into territory process, the use of a CRM system, and again, when you look at some of the results from the assessment. Uh, again, small, mid-sized business owners, 92% said they do not track ROI for their marketing campaigns. That's so you just touched on this, right? How important marketing is. But but they're not, they're spending, but they're not tracking, am I getting a return? 91% said they don't know the probability of closure for each step in the sales cycle. Wow. <laughs> and 79% said they don't have separate and distinct sales territories. So it's just people all over the place. Um, why is that? You know, so important that the sales methodology piece is because fewer companies are, are, are utilizing a CRM to help them uh, manage, you know, their pipeline, their forecasting, yeah. and close rates. And yet, the irony of that is a CRM is one of the critical components. It's kind of the backbone of the structure that allows you to build a pipeline, to yes. track activity, to look at the steps in the sales process and hold people accountable. So that is a really, really important component. And the fact that a lot of small, mid-sized business owners aren't utilizing a CRM, that's a that's a challenge. It's interesting. My clients are smaller businesses also. And the, my seventh step in my process is follow-up. And mm -hmm. I always ask, what kind of CRM system are you using? And a lot of people don't know what that is, or they say, I really can't afford one, but I do a spreadsheet. Okay, show me how you're implementing, not exactly. necessarily a bad thing, depending on the volume right. you're doing, right. but show me how you're using it so that you're not leaving money on the table. Are things falling through the cracks? Are you not following up when you promise? You know, if you can't deliver on what you're promising, people aren't going to build relationships and do business exactly. long term. <clears throat> so this follow up, the CRM, these analytics are really, really important. And, t and Tom, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know anything about that. I had to educate myself on sure, what is a sure. good CRM system, right? Sure. And and so we really do need to raise our hand and ask for help. You said that before, and I think that is such a true statement. Well, and also, Connie, what you just said is really true, right? Any tool is better than no tool. <laughs> so even if you're using an Excel spreadsheet, it's all about tracking, accountability, and that gives you metrics then that you can actually measure and, and it kind of leads into the next area which you just touched on which is you know sales analysis yes. so you know, how do you set goals how do you set um your quotas how do you do like reporting and compensation all those kind of things again the results that we saw was that 93 percent of small to mid-sized business owners said they don't understand how the sum <laughs> of a sales rep's quota compares to the overall company goals so in mm -hmm. other words there there's no alignment on what the overall company objectives are versus what they're paying sales reps on. 73% said that their sales metrics are not clearly defined, nor are they understood by the entire sales team. And 77% said they miss the single step of having their salesperson sign their annual compensation plan. And again, why are those things important? Because if sales metrics are lacking, if they're not clearly understood, if they're not clearly defined, um, then there's no direction and there's no accountability. And and the challenge then becomes like in compensation, the majority of compensation plans aren't driving the behaviors that companies are supposed to be rewarding to get results. Fascinating. And so typically when I look at compensation, I, I as a rule of thumb, I say it's usually good to set it up 50-50. 50% uh, 50 base, 50% commission. Mm -hmm. And so that's, you know, and again, that can vary based on the type of company and the type of sales role, et cetera. But the reason why that balance is important, Connie, is because you, know, you want to give them enough of a base salary so that they're, you know, not living paycheck to paycheck necessarily. Sure. Sure. But yet you don't want to be paying them so much they can go out and buy a Mercedes tomorrow. No, that's that's the part they have to work for <laughs> on the commission because sales, as you know, is about rewarding performance, right? Absolutely. And driving the right behaviors. So that's Absolutely. why that's critical. And it's funny because, you know, I have one client that I'm thinking of and, and um, when we when she first started working with me and I just, you know, you ask some questions, right? I want to understand sure. who my client is and where their struggles are because you know, for me, it's not a cookie cutter. And I know you, you kind of customize how you implement these things depending on the technology, the platform, the size, all of those things. Well, anyway, as, as I was chatting with her, um, I said, well, how many calls do you do a week? What's your ratios? You know, how do you know what your close ratio is? Are you just because I need to know where to dig in, what, exactly. what behaviors needs improvements so we get the return on your time and, and all the, where you're spending money, et cetera. And she said, oh, I don't know. She had, and now here's the thing, but, and, and listen, everyone, no judgment with this. 
right, right. I okay, I I needed to understand that. So now we can start to look at that and figure out this is how much money she needs to earn, whatever she would like to earn. Well, what does that translate from the ratios? Once you once you create the structure of the ratios, you know how many phone calls or how many Zoom calls okay. do you need to have to create one on one appointments to turn that into business, and then from that business, what is the long term projection of you know the multiple things that hopefully you can sell once you once you please and serve the client, you right. hope that they become a client for life, right? And, and, and so, to your point, Connie, so that provides a lot of great insights for the for the business owner, sure. obviously for their sales team. Sure. And it actually it, it obviously drives execution, right? Yes. Because <laughs> now I have a blueprint that I can follow that says, you know, this many calls lead to this many meetings, sure. lead to this many demos or whatever the sure. situation is. And and the last area, sales organization, again, this is one near and dear to your heart because it covers things like staffing, hiring, learning development. And then, of course, roles and responsibilities. Sure. And some of the eye-opening statistics in this area are 92% of small mid-sized business owners say they don't provide sales training to address gaps in sales competency. Now, that's, from your perspective, that's staggering, yeah, right? That's I mean, scary. Yeah. 92%. 88% said they don't clearly communicate consequences for not meeting expectations. So again, yeah. they're not holding people accountable. Yeah. And 77% said they don't attend sales calls with their sales reps. Now, again, you know, that's critical because if there's a lack of sales training taking place within companies, that means, and you know this better than anybody, you're you're not really skilling your people up and developing them to be successful and develop the competencies that are gonna make them successful, but more importantly, make your company successful as well. And if sales leadership is not clearly articulating expectations for behavior and holding people accountable, it's going to be like the Wild West out yeah. there. So so sales training, development, what you do, right, that's a critical investment to keep your staff growing. Um, but also it fills in the gaps in experience and knowledge, right? That's the benefit of helping to develop people on that. And that's really a critical element of this as well. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, you I see businesses out there. Um, and you, you know, I have, I have a huge network. I know you have a huge network. So as you know, you're talking to people to stay in touch. Oh, I just moved here. Oh, I just got a job. Oh, I'm shifting. I got a call today. Um, a colleague that I adore, he, he's just a superstar, um, looking for another job and gave, used me as a reference, which mm -hmm. I'm honored, right. That he chose me. But as I was talking to the woman, I said, you know, here's the deal. You're foolish not to hire this kid, but here's, here's the kicker. Why is he leaving the other company? Right. He's right. a superstar. Why are they letting him walk away? So yeah. this is the problem when you have those high caliber people who are thirsty to learn more, constantly reaching out and doing their own self knowledge, right? Self growth, because right. you're not feeding them, they're not going to stick around long. So you, what happens is when we don't have really all four of these structures, I would think that clarity, yeah. right, Tom, yeah. what happens is you have a revolving door or so your high achievers leave, right? Your high performers leave because yeah. they think this is crazy. I could be making more money, get more support and grow my own skill outside exactly. of this company. Yeah. That's exactly. number one. Number two, I think the other a big piece of, of these four pieces of the puzzle, why it's important, the companies that, and, and listen, again, no judgment and no criticism right. here. I'm, I'm victim to this as well, guys. But if we don't start to analyze and correct, self-correct these things, I think we end up with mediocrity in, in, our, right. in our organization. We end up with the medi mediocre people who it's just a paycheck. Well, if it's just a paycheck for them, they're not bringing anything to the table to help your organization not only grow, but thrive and be the, the company of choice for whatever it is that you're creating, right? Whatever your product or services. So it's is that exactly, what you see a lot of, Tom? That investment, Connie, like you just said, in, in learning and development is, is so important because you get a tremendous ROI on that you know it's it's you get talent yeah. acquisition and you get talent retention to yeah. your point right yeah. so and again i think like you've said several times that i'll just reemphasize this again this is no blame it's not pointing fingers no uh, and and again you can tell by the numbers here small mid-sized business owners i mean you're not alone majority with them <laughs> if you're having these problems okay sure. So the first thing is identifying that you know you have gaps in one or more of these areas and then the second part of it as we've talked about is raise your hand 
there's help out there. You don't have to be an expert in everything. <laughs> you just have to figure out where you can tap into expertise. Yeah. And, you know, Tom, here's here's the reality, too. And I know I feel this way sometimes. It's your business. You need to know everything. Right. And right. It, the reality is, like, you know, w website, the WordPress. Initially, I'm like, I, I am smart. I can learn how to do that. As soon as you go into the back end of WordPress, it's gibberish to me where, yeah, you know, right. somebody who's more techie goes, oh, all that means is where did you see that? How did you know that? So I could spend 20 hours on something, whereas if I hired someone, and it took them an hour that extra 19 hours I could have made an extra sale been able to pay that person right for their hour plus of, of labor and time and meanwhile had the, the return of my investment be exponential exactly. Exactly. but business owners I and I know this Tom is it, we think we are supposed to do it all and and the part two to that, I think, is we're not really sure where to go. So share with me what what really is a solution? What what is what sh questions or what things should my my people who listen to the yep. show who are thinking, yep. oh, my God, he's preaching. I hear him. I hear him. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I'm going to lay my hands on them. Connie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> no, I love it. Actually, um, no, that, that's a great question. So let me let me um, let me put it to you this way. So if if you hear you and your business in any of these kind of stats, right? Yeah. And if you're struggling with any one of these areas, um, like I said, I think then there's an opportunity to seek help and seek assistance. Here's the questions I think that the small business owner, I always ask them, you know, in terms of when I'm meeting with them. Is, is number one, um, you know, what, what are your pain points? So again, if any of these four areas are keeping you up at night, that that's a problem. Sure. Second thing is, okay, what if you did nothing about it, right? I mean, on a scale of one to 10, is your pain gonna be a 10 or is it gonna be a five? And you know, and that, so that's important because they have to start thinking this through in their minds as Absolutely. to why it makes sense to perhaps seek out guidance or help or advice and those Absolutely. kind of things. The next question I ask them is, okay, um, do you have anybody in the organization right now who can fill the gap in terms of a sales leader who can help you to kind of build some of these things? If the answer is no, then I ask them, well, do you want to be that person? And it's interesting when I ask business owners about, well, do you want to you know, be the sales leader? And a lot, sometimes they'll say yes, because many of them are salespeople, right? Many of them, as you know, they're out there selling their product and, and they're good at it. But they're not, you know, they're not a sales. And so when I asked myself, okay, so if you want to be the sales leader, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. So that means you're going to hold weekly sales meetings with the sales team. You're going to do one-on-ones with the sales reps. You're going to go out and work with the sales reps and ride with them, right? You're going to you're going to set up the CRM system and get all that in place. And when, now when you start listing the things that a sales leader has to do, all of a sudden the business owner is like, whoa, 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 no, I don't, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to do all that because as we just said, Connie, they need to be running their business. And so. For me, I think that the real value in this comes, it's not just helping them become successful on a professional basis, but it's also helping them become uh, more successful on a personal basis. Absolutely. In other words, giving them their life back <laughs> so that they can, A, focus on the things that are important for their business, and more importantly, they can focus on things that are personally important to them in their life so that they're not working these 80-hour work weeks and struggling and being frustrated. That, that would be the message. Yeah. And, and, you know, you know, as a bit, you're a business owner too. We work long hours, right? Mm -hmm. We choose to do it because we love what we're doing. We love what we're building, right? It fortifies who we are, the person, right? As well, right. right? There's this, this reward, internal reward for us. What is, what's the sweet spot for you from the, from a size of a business, like one or two salespeople or more, like what's your sweet spot? Yeah, it, it really it really can vary, Connie. I, I, I start off by defining it usually small, mid-sized business. I define it by revenue. So typically it could be in the five to $20 million annual revenue range. However, that's not hard and fast. I mean, many clients that I work with are below that range. Um, not too many are above that because if you're above that, typically, as we said, you've got the structure, right? You've got a sales team, you've yeah. got a sales leader, et cetera. Um, so that's what's important. And then in terms of size of the team, again, it, it really um, varies. I mean, I'm, I'm working with clients right now where, um, you know, there's a VP of sales and there's an inside salesperson. That's it. That's their sales team. Um, another client, it's again, the business owner is the salesperson <laughs> and he's trying to skill up his people to kind of take on more responsibility, but they're not they're not salespeople, you know, so right. that that's a challenge. So it really just depends on, you know, what are the issues and then what's the best solution uh, to fix them? So they may have 
a sales team or in, in the case of another client, I actually, they had no sales team. I actually hired and brought on a, a director of business development who is going to be now their salesperson and hopefully will build out an organization under this person. So uh, like I said, the, 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 if you're struggling with any of these things, Connie, the thing is raise your hand, ask. If it's a learning development issue, raise your hand, ask for Connie. <laughs> yeah. if, it, if it's something like structural like we're talking about here, you know, um, there, there's lots of uh, opportunities to help people out there. Yeah. And I love it that you have so many resources in these diverse drivers, right? So mm -hmm. Um, because I can't be an expert in all of them, nor do I want to be, nor should I be, especially yeah. because there's a resource like you out there. So, you know, everybody listening, we're out of time, but I really do hope that if, if this struck a chord with you where, or perhaps you thought, I don't even know what he's talking about. That's a problem also because <laughs> you should understand what we're talking about or you understand what we're talking about, but you're thinking, I never even put, any thought into that because I don't even know what questions to ask. I don't know where to begin. Right. It, please reach out to Tom, pick his brain. Right. Again, he has tremendous resources at his fingertips and it, it could be, here's the funny thing, just because we don't understand or know the topic, doesn't mean that it there's a it's a hard fix sometimes right. Right. you know after talking to tom you're like wait wait that's it that's all i have to do <laughs> and he could put you right in the right um uh stream the right stream so you right. now and you're Connie, slowing downstream instead of up, upstream word, Connie, about resources before we close i tell people all the time look i don't have to have all the answers I just have to know where to find them. That's right. That's <laughs> so right. to your point, you know, it's bringing in the necessary resources aside from just myself that can help, like I said, the marketing, IT, HR, whatever, those kind of things are the resources. Right, um, right. You don't do them. You Right. You don't do them personally. Exactly. Like Tom is not going to do your marketing, but he knows who to send you to for right. that marketing piece, right? If, if it's sales training and that coaching piece, right, he refers yep. to me. So again, remember, he builds a team because you never know what you need, but, exactly. but sometimes we don't even know what to ask. So I would have a conversation with Tom. I'm going to give you his email and website. His email is T for Tom. Principe, Principe, which is P-R-I-N-C-I-P-E, and then at, and it's sale, I'm going to spell it, S-A-L-E-S, -E sales, X, the letter X, acceleration, C-E-L-E-R-A-T-I-O-N, so sales, plural, X, the letter X, acceleration.com. No worries. I promise everyone I will post it in the show notes. Additionally, if you're curious as to his business, go to his website, which is sales, again, plural, and then S-X-E-S-S. -S -S. So I'll spell it S-A-L-E-S-S-X-E-S-S.com. -S 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 um, check out his website. But really, really, if you even just want to pick Tom's brain, um, please, please, uh, email him, Tom, uh, T Principe at salesacceleration.com. And again, I will post that in the show notes. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, words of last words of wisdom. What would you recommend people do today? Well, again, if, if you identify with any of these four drivers and you're struggling with these same kind of things, then like I said, either, either internally look for ways that you can do this. Some of these things, like we talked about, Connie, like a value proposition, right? I mean, you may or may not need outside help to do that, right? Sure. Like you said, you, you start with your why and you build it from there. Sure. So internally, you know, look for internal resources and you can do it organically. But if you really feel like you just don't have those competencies or those people, then by all means, reach out and get help. And like I said, it's 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 a conversation, right? Um, it Absolutely. may not. I may not be the solution, <laughs> but a conversation can help be a sounding board and point somebody in the right direction. Yeah. And, and Tom, that's why I, I love you and, and why you're in my orbit and why I have you on the show. Because like me, Tom knows when, when you get to the point, you have a conversation with Tom, client has a conversation with me, three things are going to happen. One, you're going to be so excited and think, Tom, where have you been my whole life, right? <laughs> Second thing is Tom's going to say, okay. We're not ready to do anything. I really need you to do X, Y, Z first. Then next month we can start. I could start looking for whatever it is, right? So you're not ready for me yet. Or the third one is I'm not the right person. Really, really, this is all you need. Here's, here's a, a resource for you to look at or someone that you really do need to speak with. So that's why I have Tom on the show because he's not going to be a hard sell. Like, yes, you need to hire me. I do recommend, again, information is power. 
-hmm. understand what your options are so you stop shooting yourself in the foot for me i want everyone listening i want you guys to make money but i want you to be happy making the money (laughs) instead of making more money and hating getting to work because you're so overwhelmed so again if tom and i uh, can help with that you know where to find us so again all his in- intel and information will be on the show notes. Tom, thank you so much. I always love having you on because, you know, I call it the shadow side of sales. But <laughs> honest to God, it's my blind spots. It's not I know who to send, but I, I wouldn't even know, even if I knew what to do, so not what I want to do in my business. I'd rather have pins in my eyes. So again, I love that there's resources like you and I love sharing you um, because we should be doing what our zone of genius is and not what causes us angst, right? Even though it needs to be done, it doesn't mean I have to be the one doing it. So thank you so much for sharing the Johnny, insight with so the four drivers. I enjoy talking with you. I always enjoyed being on your show. So thanks again for yeah, hosting. Yeah, always a pleasure. And again, the statistics, Tom, we're not alone, guys. Small business owners, we're not alone. So again, don't beat yourself up. That's not what this is about. Um, this is about empowering you to say, again, shining the light. Hey, I think I need help with that. And you know what? Then we've done our job on the show. Um, Tom, thank you again uh, for being on. Always a pleasure. And I hope you guys will join me weekly as we question, build, and discover together that, oh my goodness, there's so many good resources out there for us. And I hope that my guests and I provide the tips, tools, and strategies strategies for you to implement immediately. You've been listening to the Heart Centered Sales Leader on webtalkradio.net with me, your Heart Centered Sales Leader and host, Connie Whitman. Thank you so much for joining us this week. And I truly am honored to have you on this journey with me as we explore business in this new world and hopefully the uh, tools and, and people I bring to the table to help you shine the light on whatever whatever change you need to implement in your business to grow your sales. I hope that you find it uh, useful. Again, I'm honored to have you on this journey and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks so much, everybody.